Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about the best bushcrafting slash survival knives heading into 2021. Now, in this video, people might be expecting me to be talking about the latest or the greatest or knives that just came out maybe last year, but that's not actually what we're going to be talking about. A lot of these knives are tried and true, and a lot of these knives are very much uh, knives that I've tested and used extensively, and that's why they kind of make this list. I'm not a big fan of just throwing out, hey, this knife just came out last year, this is the knife heading into 2021. I like to choose reliable knives that I know I can trust and I know that I can use indefinitely. So none of these knives are exactly new. Uh, they are reliable knives and they are knives that I think that you can absolutely depend on to use whether you're doing bushcrafting or survival. And that is why I chose them. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. And as always, guys, before we get into the topic of the video, remember that if you want to see more videos about survival, bushcraft, EDC, or guns and gear, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Okay, guys, so I broke this down into two knives per kind of price category. There's like the under $100 knives, the knives that are around $100, and then the knives that are over $100 or in the $200 to $250 range. So we're going to start out with the cheapest blades, probably the most attainable blades here. I say maybe, <laughs> but the first one is and I know some people may dislike this choice or like this choice, kind of depends, is the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now I know a lot of people say that, you know, you should just go with the Companion HD. It's basically the same thing. And to each their own, I still really like the Bushcraft Black. I started out with a lot of hesitancy with this blade and not liking it at first, but I've honestly been throwing this blade into this little pocket on my Fjell Raven pants where it kind of holds it pretty well. And uh, I've just been reaching for this knife a lot, doing a lot of general purpose tasks around the camp with this knife. And once again, you know, if you get this blade without the whole like survival package with the like fire starter and sharpening garbage, if you just get this knife just as the knife, you can get this knife for under $40. And it's a pretty sweet package for what you're getting, at least in my opinion. It's very comfortable. It has a rubberized grip that is tacky, but yet super comfy to grab and holds for hours. Of course, it's a thicker blade and uh, it strikes ferro rods like an absolute boss. So this blade for a general purpose kind of camp knife, whether you're going after bushcrafting, like the name implies, or survival practice, I think this knife fits in pretty darn well in either category. So the next one, and admittedly, this blade, I'm almost hesitant to add it to this list of under 100 because Cold Steel is going through some company changes right now. So the Cold Steel SRK is not the most attainable knife right now. And the ones that are for sale right now are actually ranging closer to $100 more because there's a kind of fear buying going on with this knife. However, this blade, the Cold Steel SRK, usually averages under $50, and before the whole crisis, Cold Steel crisis kind of broke out, the SRK was a great option for, like I said, under $50 to $60. This is definitely a great knife for survival practice, and even at its more elevated crisis price, as I would call it, of, you know, $70 to $80, I still think that this is a pretty fantastic option. You can also find 3V and Sanmai versions of the blade and those are pretty good too um, if you're looking for something a little bit higher end but those do push into that over hundred dollar price so if you're looking to stay under a hundred uh, the SRK and SK5 high carbon is a fantastic option I've used this knife extensively and once again that's why I can really stand behind it because I know whether it's freezing cold outside whether it's like in the negatives or whether it's you know 70 above 80 above this blade's going to perform and do everything you need it to it's not going to break the handle's not going to wobble uh, it's a very solid knife at least the ones that were originally produced by cold steel we will see if gsm outdoors continues to uphold the quality of the srk but for now all things uh, until things change or until i know otherwise the srk is still a fantastic under 100 survival knife 
Okay, so now we're moving into the territory of right around $100. So you might be able to find these knives for $80 to $120. Uh, this is around the $100 range. So the first one for me, and I could have chose a lot of different knives. The Mora Garberg is definitely a good runner-up for this. But I wanted to include the Topps Fieldcraft because this blade has been out for quite a few years. I think actually close to going on seven years now. And this knife is just such a fantastic blade. Blade. Uh, from the ergonomic standpoint, uh, you know, it's not the best when it comes to striking ferro rods. It's not the best when it comes to doing everything. But when you hold this knife, uh, it feels great in the hand. It has a great blade to handle ratio. The blade shape itself is very capable for general bushcrafting or survival tasks. Mine, I have blued the blade so it looks a little bit different but this is the standard version with the uh, kind of tan canvas micarta or maybe brown you would call it micarta but you can get this in a ton of different options you can get it with stainless steel you can get it in 1095 high carbon uh, you know of course different options will uh, change the price a little bit more but depending on what you need the Fieldcraft by Tops is a really great option and I wanted to bring this one up because I feel like you know there are so many different options out there and of course there are plenty of good options but I feel like the Fieldcraft is often forgotten about now because it's a little bit of an older design you know it's not Vogue per se anymore but the Fieldcraft is definitely a really solid option if you're looking for something that's on the more robust side of bushcraft blades and uh, I really don't have any complaints about it. I definitely love using this one. Uh, this is another one that kind of slides into the pocket on my Fiel Raven pants. You know, uh, it just hangs out there and I grab it a lot and, you know, do general purpose camp tasks with it. But fantastic option if you're looking for something that's a little bit more, you know, upscale, very comfortable, and a very suitable option for practicing general purpose bushcrafting or survival tasks. Okay, so now looking at a little bit of a smaller blade, but still in that right around $100 range is the SE3. And, you know, this is a little bit of a different uh, style or different type of blade from the Topps Fieldcraft, but once again, extremely durable, also made out of 1095 high carbon, though I think for a little bit more money, you can get the CPM S35 VN blade which once again is a little bit more, so bumps it out of this particular price range. But the SE3 is a great, more compact blade if you're looking to practice survival or bushcraft and you have, you know, some larger tools such as a hatchet, a saw, an axe. If you have some of those bigger tools, you know, you may not need a larger knife. So going with a more scaled down knife might work out pretty well for you. And the SE3 definitely fits that bill. It is so tough and it's so resilient but uh, this is a great blade to just beat the hell out of and you can definitely baton with it uh, striking ferro rods similar to the tops unfortunately it's a little bit more challenging but i think you can modify this blade to uh work for you in that regard um overall i have no complaints about the sc3 this is another knife that's similar to the tops fieldcraft well similar to all the knives on this list i've had for years and i 100 percent very confidently back the SE3. Now you might also look at the SE4. Uh, it's in a similar price range and it is a little bit bigger but it's a little bit of a different blade. I wanted to, the reason why I chose the SE3 for this particular uh, comparison is I wanted to contrast you know a larger knife and a smaller knife if you're looking to go you know with a si one particular size. You know if you're looking for something smaller SE3 fits the bill a little bit better. Okay, so moving over to the $200 plus dollar club. So if you are looking for something a little bit more high end and you're looking to, you know, take bushcrafting maybe a little bit more seriously, or you just want something that is super high quality, these options are definitely where it's at. So we'll start off with the smaller of them, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, whether it's the uh, 2.0, the lightweight, or if you can get the original like this, uh, this is a fantastic option. Um, Bark River does a superb job with the handle and the ergonomics. This blade feels great. This is my ultimate go-to bushcrafting knife if I am looking for something that I'm strictly going to be going out doing generalized camp tasks, bushcraft tasks. This is the knife I will choose every single time because 
or almost every time I should say. I do test and use other blades, but if I have a choice in it or I'm just using a blade to use it, the Bushcrafter is where it's at for me. This blade is made out of CPM 3V, so it is a fantastic steel. Of course, this will strike ferro rods like an absolute boss. It will do anything and everything you need it to do, and at the same time, it is a smaller package, so similar to the SC3, you know, if you are running things like hatchets, axes, saws, you know, you don't necessarily need a larger fixed blade so running something a little bit smaller but yet something that's still super stout super capable this uh bark river knives bush crafter is definitely where it's at so i love this thing it is a fantastic option however like i said it does range in the about 250 dollar club depending on the handle option you go with so that is the blade of course, has a pretty good sheath, and I got my ferro rod just dangling off the sheath. So, that is my small option. My larger option is the Battle Horse Knives, or BHK, Battle Lore. So, this is the Battle Lore. Admittedly, it hasn't had as much airtime on the channel, but this blade here is another fantastic option. Made out of O1 tool steel, the Battle Lore is, if you are looking for a bigger bushcrafting knife, it's very hard to beat because looking at the battle lore, it doesn't necessarily look like a particularly special or amazing knife, but the ergonomics are fantastic on this blade, and it's one of those knives that I find can do just about any task you need. And I have several reviews on this knife, and I've shown a ton of footage of me going out into the wilderness, doing many different things. In fact, there was one outing where I was taking this knife to the limit, I was taking this knife to the limit, and I was actually, you know, like hard prying on the tip. You know, I was making notches with a saw. I was using my silky big boy and this, and I was just carving out big notches or creating big notches. And I was uh, popping uh, the kind of pieces that had been sawn out with the tip of this blade. So this blade is very robust. This thing can take a hell of a lot of abuse, but at the same time you can turn around and use this knife to do very fine tasks, do, you know, carving skills, create notches all day long. And uh, yeah, this blade is very hard to beat, especially if you're looking for something on the little bit bigger side. This is definitely where it's at. I mean, it is a bigger knife for sure and I'm not as big of a fan of the blade to handle ratio on the battle lore but it does get the job done and once again using this blade or in practice this guy is very very capable and I really do love it for a bigger bush crafting knife and of course this one is in a dangler sheath with a ferro rod loop and of course, I got my ferro rod sitting in there too. So that is the setup for this one, though you can definitely get this knife without the dangler. You can get it just running off the belt loop. I prefer the dangler. And of course, I have this one set up in a Baldrick rig, especially in the winter. It's nice to just throw this over your shoulder and have it kind of carrying in that way. So, and that one, once again, has been extensively tested by me. And I can really, when I, when I make the recommendation, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that that blade is solid. And these are uh, customs, or at least semi-customs, so unless you find one that's in their ready-to-ship kind of collection, you will have to place a custom order and wait a few weeks before you get it. So that's probably the only downside to the battle lore, is it is, you know, you may have to wait for them to custom make you one, but at the same time, Time. that that being said you can also choose handle options handle color you know sheath options sheath color and stuff like that so it's a pretty sweet deal but once again it is it does run you about 250 to 260 dollars depending on the options so those are my blades my top blades going into 2020 or sorry 2021 and overall hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as always god bless and i'm out